Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Z902 handheld libs analyzer from PsyOps. So let's take a look inside the case. Now, what we have here is of course our Z902 is right here, ready to go. Um, down in this corner here, we have some spare parts. We'll talk about those in a bit. We have a kit for intensity calibrations here, which we, again, we'll talk about further. We have two batteries here. These batteries, they just clip right into the bottom of the unit, just like that. And we have our battery charger in the middle. So now let's first take a look at the PSYOPS Z902 unit. Again, I've really liked the Libs units from PSYOPS. They have a very nice sleek design. I think the black is makes a pretty sexy little unit. Um, the screen on the back is small, but it's vibrant and responsive. So I actually like that a lot. Um, they use this um, Peak Design wrist strap, which I use for a lot of my camera stuff as well. Um, and these are just great because they this little piece here slides it is a, is a noose around your wrist so if I was to put this on you know it just it just it's not going to go anywhere and it's comfortable it gives you a little extra slack and it's comfortable to wear now the unit itself is a little heavy without the battery but when you put the battery in it balances the unit out pretty pretty good even though the the unit itself the battery itself is actually pretty small so let's take a look at uh, the other features of this unit as well so a cool part about the peak design wrist strap is that you can detach it so all you have to do is take this part of the wrist strap off and you can remove it if you don't want to use it but i'd always recommend with any expensive piece of equipment like this this is a spectrometer and this is going to be your money so i would always want just like a uh, luxury camera always keep that wrist strap going so when you look at this unit, the first thing you see is that nice design. You see laser aperture up here, but you see this big argon bottle hanging off the side. It's actually a pretty small argon bottle. It's just, just big enough to provide about 200 readings for this analyzer. Um, and there's some spares down here that tuck nicely into the case. You can see that here. And again, they're just about the size of um, an airsoft um, or a CO2 cartridge, except it's laboratory grade argon that's meant specifically for LIBS readings. So LIBS again stands for laser induced breakdown spectroscopy. It's similar to OES except where it uses a laser. So the analyzer itself feels good. Got a nice big trigger here. Feels really nice. The top relatively sleek profile and a power button up here. On the back underneath down here you'll see there's a rubber boot. That's where you, you can plug the unit in directly for power or there's a USB port there. I personally think this is nice. Um, those rubber boots can be stubborn sometimes, but they're they're roughly all the same, and, and this one is really no different. So um, then when we talk about the argon, when you're gonna replace this canister, you just pull the argon out like this. You can see how that swings out of the unit, but it actually clips back in. Hear that little click? Clips back in pretty nicely. Now I'm gonna do a separate video about argon management for the LIBS units here. Um, I think argon management's really important. Uh, the gaskets that are in this fixture here, there's actually a gasket behind the scenes in under the faceplate here. We'll talk about that too. And those two gaskets are important to keep your argon sealed and keeping your instrument running well. So the battery, the battery's just gonna clip into the unit like this and you're gonna be ready to go. You get about six six hours of battery life if you're constantly using it, and um, that's pretty cool. The battery charger itself, these units, they just slide right over the battery, and of course it would plug in with an external power supply that you'll see in a second. So let's find that power supply. It's just wrapped up in a nice cord here. Everything very clean from PSYOPs and we have a power cord that goes with it as well. So pretty standard stuff. So let's just set that back in here. Oh, what's this note at the bottom? Inspection, final inspection and quality. Hey, you know what? It's good to see that people are actually doing this. I can't tell you how many instruments I've seen in the field that have been dead on arrival. So the fact that we have a quality control person who actually signed off on this, that's a fantastic um, um, stance on quality and I applaud PSYOPs for doing that. So these here are another important feature. These are the very sexy laser glasses, laser safety glasses. And um, you know you can purchase more of these if you want, but it comes with one standard pair. And these, these are designed for the specific wavelength of light that the laser emits um, in this unit itself. So let's set those aside, okay? So now we've covered the unit and the, the power and the batteries, those things. Let's cover some of the other things here. So. First of all, we have what's called the Z900 shipping kit. Now, this is just a little bag of spare parts and accessories. It includes, let's get it out of here. A lot of little pieces in here. <laughs> 
All right, so this is a blast shield or splatter shield, it can be called either one. These go in the front of that face plate. Um, I have another video about how to change that. The laser actually doesn't hit the center of this splatter or blast shield. So if you have a dirty one or one that's not working, um, you'll know your readings won't be good. But if you flip it over the long way like this, you're gonna be able to get some more life out of it. So that's a quick tip from the Alloy Geek. All right, so these little gaskets here, now you might be tempted to say those gaskets go into this fixture here where that argon bottle seats and that's actually not true where they actually go is behind this face plate here those little gaskets go um, there's a little fixture here uh, under the nose and those gaskets go there to, to help the argon go from this location in here all the way up and come out of this aperture here so if you're unfamiliar with libs down here is just a camera we have two uh, Allen wrench screws there. There's actually the Allen wrench that you need is the Allen key I should say is actually included in that little pack. You can remove this face plate and when you do that we'll be able to take a look at like things like the splatter shield. We'll be able to change that and we'll be able to replace these little gaskets um, with the gas feed system there. So uh, pretty easy to do all that. Um, so that's pretty much it for that little extra kit here. Let's get that all put back together and there's also, we, we talked about the USB port earlier on the device. The USB, of course, just plugs into that and plugs directly into your computer. So pretty standard stuff there, but it's nice to see, you know, those cords actually being shipped with the analyzers themselves. Okay, so we have this little box here. It looks like a little tackle box. Um, and you'll see there's a bunch of metal samples inside and a USB drive. The USB drive is gonna contain your manual and some other information about your analyzer. You will be able to, you'll be able to run your analyzer without it, but I'm pretty sure Profile Builder and other things like that are on that directly. Let's take these little metal samples out. These samples are specifically for something called intensity calibration. So I have a 6061, a 3003, a 7050, and an A356 aluminum. These samples will be unique to your analyzer. Now for this analyzer, um, this is a aluminum only analyzer, which means that this analyzer is only gonna be looking at aluminums. That's the application that it was designed for. That's what it's calibrated for. And so we only have these four aluminum samples. Now each one of these samples is gonna calibrate the intensity and give you better data for specific elements. When you run those intensity calibrations, um, you're going to need to run all of them and again we have another video on that but um, it's they're, they're right there in the box and it's great that it just comes with it but just look at this case you have a nice big cavity here to kind of catch the extraneous stuff but most things here like the analyzer and the batteries themselves they just look great it's a, it's a sexy looking presentation and I find that really good so um, stay tuned the next video we're going to do is how to take your first libs reading with a Z902 and um, I'll also talk there's going to be another video as well about argon management it's really important um, that you understand the importance of argon if your unit does not have argon and is a libs unit um, that's called an air burn unit and an air burn unit won't have this there'll be a plastic black thing covering this piece here where the argon would go and the unit will not it will never work with argon um, in this case since I have argon I, I'm required to have argon to have this analyzer work for me and, and so argon management, how many readings you're getting, looking at the pressure on the screen, that's all really important. And when you're using an argon um, unit, you, you always wanna seal that surface. So your sample would need to be, I'm not gonna actually test this, but flush to the surface, just kinda of like that. So that's gonna help you get the best data. So that's all for today. We'll see you guys next time.